Okay, let's deal with the very uh, next idea of what happens if we load a different note in there other than C. Oh yeah, we've got an example actually there, an electric piano sound, and uh, we don't know the pitch of that. Uh, if I drag and drop that and replace our C3, and uh, then play C3 on my QWERTY keyboard, what I'm listening back is... We actually don't know what it is. We don't know if it's a C3 or if it's something else. And why does it matter? It matters when you start playing the keyboard. Um, let's say we have, actually, for example, we've got our strings there. It just plays a C major chord. So if I launch that, bring that a little bit down, and... Uh, I'm trying to play a C major chord on my piano. That's but you're so else, good, it sounds it? nice. <laughs> okay, this is not a harmony lesson. All right. All right. So let's let's just come back to it. Here's the simple reason, okay? I have to be careful. Do you find it using the word simple all the time when you're talking about simpler? <laughs> um, the reason is this, is that when you're creating instruments, such as, the, uh, for instance, what we're doing here with uh, the simpler device, it's always a good idea to make sure that for future use, especially, that when you hit C, you're getting the C note. Exactly, right? yeah. So let's just stick to that as a rule. So what we're going to do is we now have loaded the sample that we have. We have to assume that we didn't have the option for a C sample because this could be something that we had, uh, just something we've taken from any number of places. Of course, yeah. So how do we find out what it is? Well, we need to use a tuner. In the beta version of uh, Live, there's a tuner has been added, so you can use that in future. Um, but let's have a look at some another technique that we can use, and that's with a spectrum analyzer. Absolutely. If we have a look in the audio effects and drag and drop a spectrum just after the simpler device. Now, if I play back my C3 on the QWERTY keyboard, uh, let's make that a little bit bigger. So here we go. I can see... What are we looking at here? Uh, basically, we see the... Uh, the fundamental frequency over there. So I can see where the the note, the original pitch of the sample that we brought in is tuned on. So uh, you see, like, when I go with my mouse cursor over there on that pick here, the first pick, that reveals the fundamental frequency of the sample that we loaded. So... Now, that could be a little bit off-putting. Yeah? <laughs> yeah, I'd find that off-putting, the fundamental frequency of the sample. <laughs> off. Yeah. So what we're looking for, though, and that is actually technically correct, is the first large peak. True, yeah. We put our cursor over the large peak, and then let's have a look at the, what's the information that's in the little left-hand side box. Yeah. So we have information regarding the frequency there. Uh, so That's the bit with hertz on it. Exactly. And uh, so 352 and F3 just underneath that, and the number just underneath in dB is the amplitude of the signal. Right, so the top and the bottom one we're not interested in. Not really, not in this case. All we care about is the, the, the note that we get there. So it says F3, which means every time I hit C3 on my keyboard, I get F3 as an output. What we have to do basically is transposing this signal in order to sound like a C3 every time I play C3 okay. on my... Now, if we didn't know, for instance, how many semitones that were, was, mm -hmm. uh, we can literally do it by turning down the transpose switch. Absolutely, absolutely. Let's give it a try. So, F3, let's transpose there. Let's go, let's say, three steps down. Now, my peak now is D3. D3. So we're nearly there. Nearly there. Maybe two more steps. That's it. So, so now it reads C3. Exactly. And you're playing C3. So. And now if we try the same thing with the strings again. Uh, let's play that lovely chord. There we go. That's lovely.